has human evolution stopped? Are Homo sapiens perhaps the perfect species? So before I delve into any of these questions, what is evolution anyway? Evolution is a process in which living organisms change or develop over an extended period of time and gradually becomes a different and usually better form. And by better, I mean more efficient. The theory of evolution argues that if you go far back enough, all living organisms share a common ancestor. Now, evolution occurs through natural selection. And natural selection is a mechanism in which the genetically more advantageous variations of a species in an environment are more likely to survive and therefore pass on the genetic information. That was probably a lot of big words. So in simpler terms, that means that organisms that are born with traits to survive against the threats they are faced with in their habitat are more likely to survive and therefore pass on those traits to their offspring. The environment that natural selection occurs in is very important because it is what determines the threats that a species have to survive against. The, those threats are called selection pressures, which include predators, sources of food, and climate. Now, the variation of a trait in relation to that selection pressure is what separates those organisms that survive from those that will inevitably die. For example, if a population of mice move to a habitat with black rocks. And the selection pressure in this habitat is the eagle, who likes to eat mice. Now, the eagle can obviously see tan mice better than the black ones, so they're going to eat the tan ones more than the black ones. After many generations of this process repeating itself, there are fewer tan mice, which means there's less of a chance that the tan-colored fur will be inherited to the next generation, meaning that the black mice become more popular in this region. This is one form of evolution. A recent instance of this form of evolution is bacterial resistance to antibiotics. There are many forms of bacteria, as it is the most abundant organism on Earth. Recently, the bacteria that, is resist that causes tuberculosis has become resistant to antibiotics. So how did this happen? Again, there was a natural variation within the population of bacteria. There are those that are slightly more resistant, the green ones in this example, and those that are slightly weaker, the blue ones. And when we begin to treat tuberculosis with, back, with antibiotics, we kill off the slightly weaker bacteria, while the stronger ones survive, reproduce, and continue to spread. So, in order to talk about the future of evolution, we have to understand more about the past. Throughout history, most of our most significant adaptations have been on the basis of bipedalism, in which we began to walk on two feet. So, in order to maintain our center of gravity and make sure that we don't, you know, fall over, our feet and spine have grown curved, our hips have become smaller and morphed inwards, the start of our spine has moved from the back of our skull to the base, and our arms have grown shorter. Aside from this, homonyms have evolved mostly to improve our cognitive ability, to outsmart those around us. The cerebral cortex has grown much larger in comparison to other parts of the brain. And the temporal lobe, part of that cerebral cortex, is in charge of language processing and has developed our ability to comprehend speech. So with a lot, much larger brain case than our ancestors, humans have become capable of speech, of listening and understanding sounds and then processing it so it becomes a comprehensible language. This has paved the way for craft, trade, knowledge, written language, and most importantly, social connections, which is the foundation of society. So back to the original question. Has evolution stopped? Before I can unpack this question, I have to establish that it's almost impossible for divergent evolution to occur to humans. Divergent evolution is a form of evolution where one species splits into two other ones that no longer interbreed. This is a process known as speciation. In order for speciation to occur, there needs to be a physical barrier that separates these two species into different environments. And moreover, these environments need to have different selection pressures so that natural selection can do its thing separately. 
two new species are born as a result of a physical barrier. They no longer interbreed and have their own distinctive features. In the current day and age, with language that enables complete expression of concepts and technology that allows us to commute all over the world, it's difficult to imagine a physical barrier for humans. Like, even if we lived in the world of Divergent, where there is an actual wall caging us into a city and we can't talk to anyone beyond those walls, or even if we lived in any dystopian novel published in the past decade, we wouldn't stand around long enough that evolution would occur to the point where there are different species populating the globe. Even then, wouldn't we be able to use past languages to communicate and form social relationships? Even then, we wouldn't lose our IQ, hopefully, which means that we would still be able to seek for other people because we're aware of them surrounding, like, populating our globe. But even as a single species, evolution has practically stopped for humans. And there are three main reasons for this. And the first one is technology. The medicinal treatments discovered in recent years, which is including vaccines, antibiotics, and organ transplants, have lowered infant mortality rate, prolonged life expectancy, and improved the overall health of the population. So what this means is that those who are genetically stronger are no more likely to survive than those who are weaker. And I'm not saying that this is in any way bad for humanity because we want people to survive, but we are essentially preventing the part of natural selection that states the stronger survive and therefore pass on their genes. Aside from this, our ability to share information is amazing. Before the computers and the internet and emails existed, Information surrounding science was hard to come by. Now the ease of access for information is astounding. Papers published about new health discoveries are readily available for those who need it. In fact, it's hard to come by an illness that we cannot diagnose, that we cannot treat, or cannot even slow or lessen the symptoms of. Often we might hear chronic illnesses taking the life of the elderly, but we're always and constantly trying to find cures and ways to manage these illnesses. Our added knowledge of healthy lifestyle choices has also contributed to preventing natural selection. In comparison to the past, we're much, it's much easier for us to monitor our bodies and seek medical advice when needed, rather than in dire situations. So having more knowledge and sanitation where it's much easier for us to keep ourselves healthy. And the second reason that I want to talk about is our higher order thinking. Our curiosity, thirst for knowledge, and social capabilities differentiates us from other primates. Sure, we have heard stories of animals showing love for those around them and even mourn the loss of their treasured ones but that's amplified much more in humans because of our high intelligence. Many people have devoted their entire lives to finding cures and saving others. Even now, people reach out to those in third world countries. They reach out to the poor, the weak, those who need help. It's because of our morals and integrity that we reach out. Even then, our higher order thinking has created a much larger curiosity and thirst for knowledge. Look, we want to know what happened at the beginning of time. We want to know if there are aliens out there. We want to know how the brain works in its entirety. Imagine the curiosity that people had about humans, animals, and life in general centuries ago. That curiosity has driven science and technology forward. Only a species that no longer has to worry about their survivability can spend so much time and effort pondering about such philosophical things. And the last reason is the lack of selection pressures that humans have to face. When we learn about natural selection at school or when we're studying for our next science test, which I'm sure all the year 10s are doing, we think of sources of food as a selection pressure. So for example, in Darwin's finches, those with big variations that were able to use the most abundant food source 
outsurvived those with big variations that couldn't use that most abundant food source. Climate is a selection pressure. Those plants in the desert who are able to combat the heat are more likely to survive. Predators is a selection pressure. Those that can ward off, hide from, or hurt their predators can survive longer than those who can't. So humans, what predators are we scared of? What climate are we scared of? What food do we have to use physical capabilities and traits to find? When we say we're scared of dying, what is it we're actually scared of? We're scared of not having a home to stay off the street and hide from the elements. We're scared of not having money to buy food. Human selection pressures are vastly different from those of animals. Almost everything depends on money. Do I have wealth for a home? Do I have money to buy that sunscreen or that heater? Can I afford education? Can I afford medicine and treatments? The selection pressures that Darwin proposed in his theory no longer applies to humans. If you think about it, humans aren't even that much better than animals. We can't live underwater, we can't fly, we can't see well in the dark, and we can't use sound waves to guide our way. We're different because we're apparently super smart. If we're the ones that understand nature and instincts in its entirety, if we are the most intelligent species to have inhabited the Earth, wouldn't it make sense that we're the ones that break nature's rules? Has human evolution stopped? The answer is yes. Human evolution has stopped, like proposed in Darwin's theory. Those selection pressures no longer apply to us. It's no longer hiding from predators, but rather climbing our way up through society. It's no longer the smartest survive, but those that can afford education survive. In saying that, there have been some unexplained changes to the human body in recent years. For example, we have become more able to digest lactose. In fact, 35% of the population, in comparison to the 5% 100 years ago, are able to digest lactose. But that didn't happen because those that were lactose intolerant died and therefore couldn't pass on their genes. To be honest, we don't really know why adults have become more capable of digesting lactose. We don't really know why our brains have been shrinking for the past 20,000 years. Certainly, it is an evolution of a sort, but not the evolution that we learn about in schools or know from studying animals. The way that evolution works on humans is different. We just don't know what that different looks like. There is something I'm sure of, and that's human culture and society will continue to evolve far into the future because of our ability to communicate, because of our intelligence and our emotions. What we consider morally right, attractive or cool will continue to change in the future, and our need to fit in and impress others will see that we conform to those unspoken rules. Social cultural evolution has nothing to do with genetics and physical properties. Rather, it's about human nature and behaviours. Human culture and society will continue to evolve far into the future. So are Homo sapiens the perfect species? You probably wanted me to say yes, but in truth, humans are most definitely not the perfect species. And I'm not just saying that because Donald Trump exists. I'm saying that because we will still evolve. Most of that evolution will certainly be in relation to human society and culture, but even on a physical level, we will still evolve, just in a different way to before. Even if we can evolve through technology in the future, even if immortality becomes a thing, even if we can upload our consciousness, even then, I doubt we'll evolve to become Superman. Thank you. <laughs>